much on the 1000V in this session, uh, but it will certainly be the uh, topic of a section in its own right on a, a later time. Basically, 1000V is a fully functional software replacement for the V-switch uh, within VMware. Um, it doesn't use FEX technology. I think that's probably the most important differentiation. With VMFEX, we're switching in hardware. With Nexus 1000V, we're still switching in software within the hypervisor. Um, the Nexus 1000V takes advantage of the distributed virtual switch API uh, from VMware, which allows third parties to make um, DVSs. Um, Nexus 1000V also um, is not free. It's a licensed product. The 1000V has two elements to it the virtual supervisor module, the controlling bridge, if you will, and the virtual Ethernet module, which is the, the host portion, the actual uh, DVS, if you like, um, sometimes referred to as the um, VEM or the VEB in VMware's terms. Um, however, the host portion, the VEM or the VEB, is identical in the Nexus 1000V and in VMFX. It's the same bit of software we load on the host. The difference is that in VMFX, the controlling bridge is actually our fabric interconnect, the hardware fabric interconnect within the UCS. And in Nexus 1000V, the virtual supervisor module is a VM as well within the virtualization environment. It can be within the uh, virtualization environment as a VM, or it can be external to the virtualized environment uh, as a VM within an appliance called the Nexus 1010. Uh, it's a great product. There's obviously as a, as a license cost, you'd expect a bit more functionality, and you do. You get things like uh, uh, ER span, private VLAN, uh, additional QOS um, features. Uh, Nexus 1000V, great product. Um, it's um, uh, administered via SSH. You SSH into it just just as if you would a you know, fully uh, uh, fledged Nexus physical product. Um, Cisco sometimes refer to it as the, the biggest switch you'll never see because it's a completely virtualized switch. If you can think of a, a Cisco 6566 um, uh, running Nexus code, that's pretty much what the Nexus 1000V is. It supports 64 line cards, each line card being a host. But again, well worth the subject of a, a session in its own right. I mentioned Cisco 6500s. Um, in this presentation and have used the um, illustration in the graphic purely uh, because I think it's probably the most common model that people know and really to get the concepts over. Um, however, it's worth pointing out that the Cisco 6500 range do not use or support fabric extension. Uh, so please don't go away and try and plug your fabric extender into your 6500 because it's not going to work. Fabric extension currently is only in the Nexus platform or Cisco UCS. So a common question is, so which implementation of VMFX is best for me or um, is Nexus 1000V best for me? Um, and the answer generally I'm afraid is always it depends. Um, generally there's you know different horses for courses there may be environments where VMFX would be the better choice there may be other environments where Nexus 1000V may be a better choice it always comes down to you know the performance requirements of the workloads versus the granularity of control and the the features required by those workloads um, there may be environments where you'll be fine just running the standard V switches and distributed virtual switches that you get um, standard with the hypervisor so to cut long story short there isn't a one size fits all it really is dependent on the environment and quite commonly uh, we would use a hybrid environment and we'd have a mixture of vmfx nexus 1000v and standard v switches just dependent on the um, implementations okay so now hopefully we're all familiar with what vmfx is and why it uh, may be a good idea for us uh, so in the next section, I'll take you through how to set up VMFX uh, start to finish.